All oh, right, JDs and Lillman, uh, we are back with another video. Today I was testing on a vulnerability disclosure program and we were able to get a critical XSS vulnerability uh, on this carding site. Um, just a note for YouTube, all of this has been responsibly disclosed at the time of uploading and they have had sufficient time to patch the vulnerability and have allowed me to fully disclose it. Any subdomains or domains shown in this video that are not blurred are completely safe and have been confirmed by the team to be so. Now, this is the site we will be testing today. Uh, as you can see, just a basic racing site and I'm gonna walk you through how I approach this and how I found the vulnerability. Okay, so first step is we are going actually Oh, my mouse is just freezing up, ignore that. Uh, we're gonna start taking our notes and we're gonna put in the scope, okay? So this is a wildcard domain, um, is in scope, so we'll do, uh, what is it, carting, benelux.com, so anything at cartingbenelux.com and the main page are in scope, okay? So we'll save this and I'll get into the XSS proof of concept soon, but first we will uh, initially do, actually, wait, for that we will export uh, target equals, put that in, okay, sudo uh, subfinder, I'm gonna let that run, oh my version's outdated, that's fine, I'll update that later, and we'll just give subfinder a moment to go through and check all that. Um, in the meantime, what I did was I went on and had a look around the website. Obviously, uh, login or register was very interesting. And the first thing I noticed was this parameter of language um, and the PHP page. So I, I was very interested in that. I tested a couple of things and I noticed I was getting some weird errors with some um, escaping parameters on the page, but I wasn't really getting any XSS. So I, I tested a couple things. I tested for SQLi, I tested for puny codes, um, which they have a good defense, which is just, you have to log in with the username. Um, so naturally there's no point doing a puny code attack because you simply can't, because you can't puny code an email. Um, so they're good on that respect. Cool. So it found one subdomain, uh, which we'll just have a look at. All right, so nothing interesting there. Um, we'll just run Asset Finder. It's generally pretty quick, yep. And we'll have a look if it found anything. Okay, nothing of interest. Uh, last thing we'll do, uh, maybe Ferox Buster for anything interesting and just, you know, have a look through that. Uh, you can do Fuff as well. Um, oh, wow, we're getting, yeah, tons of files. Um, so you can always have a look, you know, look for, uh, there's the vulnerability disclosure page. You can have a look for things like, you know, exposed files or maybe uh, LFI, um, just, you know, have a poke around, see if you can look maybe vulnerable, you know, there might be vulnerable JavaScript somewhere and you can just have a look. Um, we'll just briefly look through what Ferox Buster gets. Um, nothing majorly interesting right now, there's just, you know, images. Obviously the register and login.php are interesting. Um, assets, 301 profile.php, um, that's interesting. So we'll open that, uh, could be, you know, uh, we'll just translate this page from Dutch. Uh, we are gonna stop Ferox Buster, just cause it's chewing up all my RAM. Uh, and we'll just have a look at this page here. Page and maintenance, We're working on updates. So I would say that somebody probably found um, you know, an IDOR here and reported it and they fixed it, is my guess. Okay, we'll just leave this for now because it's in maintenance. Now, 
we would ordinarily, you know, uh, we'll just remove the Ferox Buster output because we don't need it. So we've got the two domains. Um, normally, you know, you'd sort them, check if they're live, you know, work from there, uh, but we didn't find anything, so there's no need to do that. Now, the next thing I did was I ran uh, the XSSR tool. And so you can see, uh, I was obviously curious about the language parameter. And for the XSSR tool, you just put in, you know, XSS, like where you'd put fuzz in fuff, um, just to tell it, hey, this is a parameter I want to check out. And we'll run it. And as you can see, we get this output. All right. So uh, we can open up this payload. And then we would basically look at the source code for this hash. Okay, so we copy it and then we will view page source and then we will control find or control F. And we have a look and we see that it is in different um, in def different uh, areas in the page. And that was good enough for me to continue testing different uh, different payloads, right? So we'll get into the proof of concept. We're gonna inject some HTML uh, with the word hacked into this page, just as a simple harmless proof of concept uh, for the bug bounty. So we're gonna open up our notes. Uh, we'll go to proof of concept and we will just copy this URL and we'll replace the login page with this. So you can see the normal login PHP uh, lang equals and then we basically have this URL encoded um, payload that sets the color to red uh, and then basically puts in in the um, you know h1 tag the text hacked, right? Uh, if we want to look at this properly, what we might do is just quickly uh, decode it so you guys can see what's actually happening here. Uh, hopefully it cooperates. Okay, so you can see here, uh, the real code behind this is just simply a breakout sequence here of a quotation mark and this little fellow and then just the h1 tag, hacked h1, okay? So we're gonna go back, and we're gonna hit enter, and you'll notice, boom, okay? You can see the injected text right here, and we can click on that, and it'll redirect to the cookie policy for some reason. You can also see other mangled text on the page, um, things here, things here and this comes up with all XSS payloads that involve injection or uh, like prompt pop-ups um, and they're just kind of artifacts from the way that this website was designed but yeah so I'm gonna be reporting this uh, this video will only go live once they have patched this vulnerability um, thank you guys for watching any questions hit me up on discord I know that a lot of my videos don't have narration or they don't have, you know, maybe everything's blurred and I totally get that and I get all the comments from you guys and I read them. And the, the reason being is that YouTube is very picky about how they censor content. Uh, so I can't really give instructions in a lot of ways, um, which is unfortunate because I think that this is a topic that should be taught and, and it makes the internet a safer place. However, I am in the process of building my own platform where all of my content with narration and unblurred where legal and ethical will be posted. Um, it will also be posted in the Discord in the description of this video. So make sure to jump in, check that out. Um, as I previously mentioned, hit me up if you've got any questions at all. Uh, I read every single message and comment on this channel without fail. Uh, also, another note, um, some of the people who are in the Discord and most active on this channel will be getting some prizes. Uh, these will be cash prizes, these will be things like Try Hack Me memberships, 
or they can be interchangeable, right? If you don't, if you already have a Trihackney membership and you win one, uh, then you're just gonna get cash or something, right? But essentially, make sure you're in the Discord so that if you get picked because you've been super active on this channel, I can see you've been commenting and all that. If you get picked, uh, then I can give you your prize on Discord because otherwise I don't know who you are and I don't really have a way to message you aside from YouTube comments. Um, I think that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and for all the support and peace.